All right, welcome back everybody. Uh, in this tutorial, we are gonna do a bottle tab. Um, this is gonna be a lot shorter than the last one. It's definitely not gonna be an hour long. And it's gonna be a little bit more beginner friendly. Uh, not so many um, advanced techniques. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna drop in a cylinder. And I want to <clears throat> select, um, well, I want to have 24 little tabs that stick out of the bottom. And I liked the spacing of three spaces per tab. So I want 24, with three spaces. We're going to have uh, 72 vertices on this guy. So let's hit five for the graphic view, one to go in a front view. And then I'm going to scale this on the Z by hitting S and Z to about, I'd say that looks good. Go into edit mode, hit control R and let's place this a little bit above center. So now I'm going to hit control tab and go down to face select mode. And this is where the fun part is going to begin. Uh, I'm going to hit C and I'm scrolling my mouse wheel to change the size of this. I want to grab three, space, and then three. And I'm going to do that all the way around. And in order to move, you have to hit escape to get out of this. And then I'm going to rotate, so C. Just select these guys here. It's not really that bad. all the way around here. There we go. Once you have all these selected, go ahead and hit E and then S, Shift Z, because I don't want to scale on the Z axis, I just want to scale in and out here. Uh, move these in. Uh, I'd say that looks good. And if you look down, um, over in this area when I'm scaling you're gonna see a little bit of info so I'm gonna bring that in uh, about 0.96 so there we go so now we want to delete all this down here because we're not gonna need it so I'm gonna go back into front view or the graphic view hit Z for wireframe a to deselect, B, and I'm going to go to here. I'm going to make sure all these faces are selected. And then I'm going to invert the selection with Control I, and that selects the faces that I want to delete. So I'm going to hit X and delete these faces here. So now if you hit Z and take a look here, uh, it's starting to take the shape of a um, bottle top. All right, so here I'm going to hit Control R and put a little bit of a supporting edge about right here. And I'm going to hit Control Tab, go into face select mode, grab this face, hit I, and we're going to inset this, inset it again again, again, and again. We'll see how that looks. Now if you tab out of edit mode, go into your tools, hit smooth, go over to your modifiers and add a subdivision surface. You're going to kind of see this bottle uh, top taking shape. Now I want these to scale outward I also want them to pinch in a little bit. So this is the best way I found to do it is I'm going to go into front view, hit Z, switch to vertex mode with control tab. Make sure everything's deselected with A. I'm going to hit B, grab all these vertices. I'm going to go in top view uh, with uh, number pad seven. 
And then I want to scale these out, but I don't want them to go up or down um, on the Z. So I'm going to hit S, Shift Z. That'll constrain it to the X and Y axis only. Pull this, uh, pull this out a little bit. Save out there. Uh, maybe a little more. Go back in a tab. S, Shift Z. I think that works. And the best way I found to select these um, was in this view, just hit C. And if you hold down your middle scroll wheel, click and hold and paint over, you'll uh, actually deselect. So I'm going to go around to all these, deselect them. It's probably a faster way to do it. I'm just not thinking of it right now. And I want these to poke in a little bit. So I'm going to hit, uh, actually I'm going to go right here to my pivot point, select individual um, origin, hit S, and then shift Z, bring those in a little bit. And now they're kind of pointy. Kind of like that. And the shape is pretty decent too. Let's see. Okay, so let's give this a material. Pretty happy with that. Let's go down here, go to your node editor, and new material. Uh, click right here, hit P, that'll put your principal shader in there. You can change your settings here, here, but I'm going to add some stuff to it, so I need, uh, I need the extra room. So I'm going to make it metallic, and I'm sitting here drinking a Coke, so I'm going to make it red. Give it a little bit of roughness, and it almost looks like there's a clear coat on top of it, so I'm going to drag clear coat up. I'll leave that roughness where it is. Um, and I have this add-on link below. It's Easy HDRI. Um, you can actually find it on my uh, part one of my last video. You can get the download link, or uh, I'll probably link it here too. But it's super easy for HDRI environments. So I'm going to create the world. Pick uh, my favorite HDRI. And give this a render. See what it looks like. I feel like this edge is a little bit too sharp. I want it more round. So I'm going to go out of edit mode. And if you're having a hard time getting close to it, select it and hit period on your uh, number pad. And that'll center it and allow, allow you to move in a little, a little more. So I'm in edit mode with tab. I'm going to hit control tab, select edge. If I hold alt and click this edge, it'll do a ring select. And if I hit GG, that'll bring it in a little bit. And I'm going to hit GG again. There we go. That's, that's better. It's not as sharp. Yeah. I like that. All right, so let's now give it some thickness because it's way too thin. Um, so in your modifiers, add a solidify modifier, but put it uh, below the subdivision surface or put the subdivision surface below the, below the solidify modifier. Um, even thickness. And you really don't want to go far. I hold shift whenever I drag on these sliders. It lets me go um, in a more fine, uh, fine selection instead of this fast. 
it really slows it down lets you kind of fine tune what you want so I think I want this it's not much um, but I'm gonna apply that go into edit mode and on the bottom here I'm gonna put two supporting edge loops in with control R one there and one there and you can see it's a lot more thickness than what it looked like originally but it'll be okay and I'm noticing my bottle cap the inside of the cap is actually a silver the outsides red so an easy way to select that is scroll in here to uh, this edge hit uh, hold alt right click it and then if you hit control E and mark this as a seam you can switch to face mode and hit L and it'll essentially select everything and then cut off at this edge so you won't select things on the outside so what we're gonna do is go into your materials once that's selected add a new one new material P for principled I'm gonna make it metallic a little darker give it a little roughness and make sure you click assign with this selected on your new material so now when you render your tops red and then your bottom is aluminum oh all right well um, if you go back into edit mode with tab you should still have all this selected hit control and then plus and then assign again and that should take care of that little band yeah that works there we go and it's little details like this that really help a render a lot of people will make a bottle and they'll just make the glass and possibly fill it with water or beer or pop or something but they leave out the cap they leave out the label um, and it's a lot of those small details that really help sell a render and who knows we'll probably end up making a bottle and label uh, here pretty soon too so now that you've made this um, we need somewhere to put it because if you go into your camera view and render that's kind of boring so what we can do is uh, let's go to logo and if you go to your browser of choice and you search for a coke logo and PNG the very first one that pops up um, is what we're gonna use and I've already downloaded this so go ahead and download this and I'm gonna need to be here I want this logo obviously to be on the top kinda of like mine is now so I'm gonna go into top view edit mode and hit 5 for your, so you're in orthographic view if you hit A unwrap it and just uh, project from view here let me pull this over go to my UV oops not that one I want up here my UV image editor so I can see what I've unwrapped and I'm gonna take this drop it in here I should be able to pop it up here there we go awesome let's unwrap this uh, reset project from view scale up that's about where I want it uh, but for what we're gonna what we're gonna do I don't want this to be red um, this coke logo as you can see it's red it should be black and white which I'm sure we could have found one but this is easy enough 
So I'm gonna get out of edit mode with tab. Hit shift Z to go into render view. And um, you should have the node wrangler enabled. If you don't, go to file, user preferences, add-ons, and node. Make sure that's checked. Save your user settings because this is amazing. Um, control shift, click this image, and you can see what it's doing here. <clears throat> So hit control T with this selected and I only want uh, one. So check your min and your max and that'll make it so you just have uh, one logo going across here. And I usually scale this to change how big my logo is. So if I bring this down a little bit, should make this a little bigger. I guess it's uh, I guess it's the same size as what I already had. All right. So I need to make this a, a black and white image. So I'm gonna drop a color ramp in, and as you can see, Control Shift click, you can see exactly what's going on. So black. I'm going to really bring up my white. And we're going to use this as a mask. So underneath, I'm just going to duplicate this, get rid of that metallic. If you click and drag down over all these, uh, you can set this to one and it'll go back to your default bright white. And with Node Wrangler, hold down Alt and right click and drag. I want this to go into here, this to go into here. And I want to flip these. And there we go. I'll bring this up here so you can see exactly what I did. So I'm essentially cutting out um, the white from the black. So this is your black input and this is your white input. And I'm just uh, masking it out, kind of like in Photoshop. All right. So that's kind of cool, but we're not done yet. We want uh, what the thumbnail looked like. So. This is also free. Go to polygon.com. It's an awesome website. Um, if you don't have an account, just make one. It takes two seconds. Go to textures and free assets. And download this cutting board right here. So when you select it, uh, your software choice is gonna be up here. If you're using a different software, uh, click whatever you want. But if you're using Blender, obviously you click Blender and you select your cycles renderer. And I selected uh, 4K for my extra texture sizes. And then download. All right, so once that's downloaded, go to wherever you downloaded it, cutting board. And then you go into your software go to blender blender cycles and you can see here is your cutting board so copy this path right here this is the easiest way I've found uh, go to file append paste it up here there's your cutting board and the object we want the cutting board obviously so this is probably gonna be tiny. Yeah, it is. So I do have my scene scale, I believe set to millimeters. I always have some sort of scene scale set. And these are, these are like the size of a quarter. So I'm just gonna scale this way down until it looks like it would fit on that cutting board if I dropped it on there. Yeah, that works. 
bring her down here. Just make sure that's flat on the surface. That looks flat on the surface to me. So I'm going to go back in top view and I'm in orthographic view uh, with five. I think I have a camera in my scene somewhere, don't I? Uh, yeah, I do. So I'm going to frame this up right about here and I'm going to hit control alt zero and that'll bring my camera uh, to what I was looking at and it'll be whatever your camera um, focal length is. So a 35 millimeter. That's probably fine. We could go like portrait view. My favorite lens is a 85, but eh, we'll leave it at 35 for now. See what happens. So I'm going to click this hit G. Whoa. Uh, hold down uh, shift and move it. It'll move a lot slower. I'm probably going to scale this up a little bit too. It's a little small. I'm going to make sure that me scaling it didn't make it go too far in, which it did. And what's cool about this cutting board is all the textures are already set up. So if you go to render it, and I'm using the same HDRI, apparently I have enabled my depth of field. So let's just get rid of that depth of field. There we go. And I like the camera at the top view like this, but I don't like it directly on top of it. So I'm going to pull up my 3D view here, go to my side view, hit five. I'm going to bring my camera down and then rotate it up. Bring it down some more, rotate it up. Yeah, I kind of wanted to see the bottom of it here. Let's go into border view. There we go. I'm going to move it over a little bit. And while I like the cutting board, I don't like the color. Um, what I did was I went, I hit shift A and then S and typed in hue for a hue and saturation. And I just turned the value all the way down to one. And that gave me that dark gray, almost black. And then you can bring the strength of this down. It's a little bright. Oh, I think there's still a, a lamp in the scene. Let's get rid of that. That did not help. Okay, so now I want to rotate this around. I can see where the light's hitting. So right now it's over here. Hmm. Maybe I do just like it at its at its default. It's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. And for the second one, I just went into front view, duplicated it. Put it about there. There we go. I'm just rotating it around the Z to where it looks like it's sitting on top of it, sitting on top of the other one. There. Go back in a camera view. Whoops. I'm hitting Shift Z for a. Uh, fast render previews. All right. And there we go. There is a super simple uh, bottle top there. Let me bring the camera. Nope. Bring the camera in a little bit. Don't push the Coke tab through the uh, through the cutting board. I'm going to scale them up a little bit more. So I'm going to scale them together. Front view, pull them up, 
zero to go back to camera view. Down a little bit. And now I want to select this one. And I don't like how it's perfectly rotated like that. There we go. Vary it a little bit. And I don't know, I don't think I like the sharp edge still. So I'm going to grab this one, hit G twice and bring it in. Trying to round it a little bit. Alt, right click, control B, maybe bevel that a little bit. Yeah. I like that uh, rim line I'm getting there. So now I get to do that over here. So this top one. Alt click. I think that's the bottom one. Like the, the thickness one. Eh, maybe not. Yeah. Alt click. Control B. Make sure nothing's sticking through there. There we go. That's a little bit better rim on that. It doesn't look as sharp. Maybe even bring that in a little more with a uh, GG. Bring that one in and then down. That's kind of bugging me. kind of space these out a little bit. Yeah, that hard line right there. It's bugging me. Make sure you hit G twice so it's sliding down its own uh, axis. Just kind of moving these around a little bit until I like the result. I'm scaling this one in a little bit. That's uh, the thickness. That's a little better. And I don't want it to be so perfect. Um, so let's grab the smudges, um, that I linked in my last video. Those are free and they look pretty awesome. All right. So let's grab those materials. Um, there are these ones here. I'm going to give, I'm going to try, uh, let's say this one. Drop that in there. Non-color data. I want a color ramp. I'm gonna plug that into there. And let's see what this looks like. Maybe I need to Invert it first. Yeah, there we go. And I'm going to click this guy, hit Control T. See what generator looks like. Generator looks pretty good. Box. And uh, I'll show you how to stop the repeating. Just a kind of cheat way that I do it. So I'm going to Control click, or right, Control Shift click this one. And I want to see 
Let's see those stains and smudges. There's a couple showing up there. I don't want a lot. If I made them a little bigger by dropping the scale. Yeah, it's not bad. So there, the uh, cutting board has a little bit of uh, imperfections and scrapes and scratches on it. Now this has a little something too. Nothing's perfect in the real world, so I guess we could put that in there just because I won't really see anything, but why not? And to break up uh, how this repeats itself, you can select this cap, go into its material, click this to make it uh, it's a single user so it's not linked to anything. And then usually what I do is I just change my location to like, I don't know, six. Nope. There we go, just drag these around till it looks a little different. There. That looks different than this one now. It's kind of the quick way I found to do it. I kind of like that, actually. I like that better than how this one looks. So if you kind of play with the location here and get a couple different results. That's not doing much. This one and this one. There, I kind of like that. There we go. I would uh, I'd call that finished. So the next one's going to be a lot bigger. Um, it's going to be pretty awesome. It's not going to be that hard. Um, I guess there are some different techniques that I used, but uh, they're kind of cool, and they might help you along the way with some different projects. So thanks for checking this one out, and I will see you guys probably within the week with the new tutorial. So thanks. See you later.